Ladies and gentlemen, in this video, I will be telling the story of someone who is, in my personal opinion, a very underrated historical figure, and that is Mexican General Manuel Fernandez Castrillon. The Major General is most known for his service under Antonio Lopez de Santa Anna during the Texas Revolution. Su alojamiento está dispuesto, Excelencia. ¿Acamparon las tropas de avanzada? ¿Las baterías emplazadas? Sí, pero tal vez no sean necesarias. Parece que los tejanos desean parlamentar. Not much is known about the general's early life. It is not even clear where in the Spanish Empire he was born, though it has been narrowed down to either Spain itself or Cuba. He was originally a member of the Spanish Imperial forces fighting to subdue Mexico's war for independence. However, he would soon switch sides and fight for the cause of the Mexican independence forces. This is where he would come to meet General Santa Anna, and serve under him for the first time at the Battle of Veracruz in 1822. General Castrillon remained Santa Anna's loyal ally through much of their working relationship even after the Mexican War of Independence, with Santa Anna becoming the president and eventually dictator as he began to do away with the Mexican Constitution and many Mexican states declaring open rebellion against him. Manuel Castrillon continued to serve under Santa Anna as he one by one began to quell these various rebellions. One of these rebellions would come to be known as the Texas Revolution. Serving as Santa Anna's personal aide, General Castrillon would accompany him as he marched his army north to San Antonio. It was here that the infamous Battle of the Alamo would take place as Santa Anna besieged the small Texan force garrisoned there. During this campaign, General Castrillon opposed many of Santa Anna's more brutal decisions. He completely opposed the immediate assault against the fortified Alamo, advocating that the Mexican army should instead wait for the arrival of its more heavy artillery that could reduce the Alamo's walls to rubble and save many Mexican lives that would be lost trying to take them. Cañones de cinco kilos llegan mañana. ¿Para qué sacrificar la vida de tantos soldados por tomar un muro que puede ser derruido? General Castrillón, ¿qué es la vida de los soldados sino vida de gallinas? ¿Y si se rinden? Son piratas, no soldados. Ni un solo prisionero. General, hay reglas de gobierno. ¡Pero qué es eso? ¡Usted, señor, no ha entendido nada de las dificultades de su entraña! However, despite having his reservations, he was a loyal soldier to Mexico, and upon receiving his orders to lead the battle's first column of troops, he did so with expert efficiency. In the aftermath of the Alamo, several Texan prisoners were brought before Santa Ana, Davy Crockett included among them, supposedly by General Castrillon himself. According to the diary of Jose Enrique de la Peña, another Mexican officer, a humane and honorable soldier, General Castrillon would plead for the lives of these Texan fighters who had survived the Alamo siege. Excelencia! Le suplico que le perdone la vida. Castrion's arguments for mercy were ignored by Santa Anna, and all the prisoners were executed. Not just then, but again at Goliad, where he protested once more in vain to the execution of nearly 400 Texan prisoners, which would become known as the Goliad Massacre. General Castrion's compassion was a sign of his kindness and humanity. 
not to be mistaken for weakness by any means. For when he did finally lose his life in the Battle of San Jacinto, he was one of the few Mexican officers to stand his ground and not run for his life. During the chaos of the surprise attack, he took charge of the men operating the army's only cannon named the Golden Standard. Within a few moments, most of the Mexican artillerymen had been killed by Texan riflemen. The Mexican troops began to flee, shouting at Castrillon to join them. According to reports from survivors of the battle, he shouted back, I have been in 40 battles and never shown my back. I am too old to do it now. Even with Santa Ana himself fleeing the battlefield, General Castrillon faced back towards his cannon. One of the Texan eyewitnesses who recorded his bravery was Walter Pei Lane. As we charged into them, the general commanding the Tampico Battalion tried to rally his men, but could not. He drew himself up, faced us, and that's when he spoke those very words in Spanish. His bravery also impressed Thomas J. Rusk, the acting Secretary of War for the New Republic of Texas. He rode along the Texan lines, shouting at his men to spare the general, at one point even knocking aside their rifles to prevent them from taking aim at Castrillon. However, his efforts would be in vain, as he could not hope to stop them all. Walter Pei Lane also recorded this event. General Rusk hallooed to his men, don't shoot him, and knocked up some to their guns, but others ran around and riddled him with balls. I was sorry for him. He was an old Castilian gentleman. Many Texans held Castrillon as a hero, who chose to fight when he could have ran, and he is honored on both sides of the Texas Revolution, except by Santa Ana who blamed him for the loss at San Jacinto, later in life decrying him as an incompetent fool whose actions led to their defeat. General Castrillon's body was claimed by his old friend and member of the Republic of Texas cabinet, Lorenzo de Zavala. Zavala's relationship with Castrillon dates back to when he himself was a member of the Mexican government. Him and his family had moved to Texas for their own safety after Zavala had resigned his post in France and renounced Santa Ana, in response to him assuming dictatorial powers and not observing the Mexican Constitution of 1824, a constitution that Zavala himself had helped create. Lorenzo de Zavala, who eventually became the Vice President of Texas, saw to it that General Manuel Fernandez Castrillon was buried with honor and dignity at the De Zavala Family Cemetery, which can be visited today in La Porte, Texas. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video and feel like you got something out of it. I don't really know what possesses me to make these videos, they're very spur of the moment. Sometimes I'm just researching things for fun, and during that research I come across some very extraordinary people with very extraordinary stories. And some of these stories, like General Castrillon, their stories aren't being told, and if they are being told, they're not being told by a lot of people. I mean, I even looked up videos on this guy on YouTube and nothing came up. I felt personally moved by this story and felt like it was worthy of a video. So here we are. Sometimes I just can't take my mind off a topic until I make a video about it. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hit that like button and subscribe to help my content and channel grow. And leave a comment. Let me know if you've ever heard of General Kestrion before. I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Go with God and be safe.